Today we introduced uh, our mission ideas entitled Microsatellite Observing Atmospheric and Space Electricity for the Science of Serious Natural Disasters, Challenge to Their Mitigations. Everybody believes science advances day by day. However, we are still suffering with natural disasters such as uh, earthquake, tsunami, lightning. And <clears throat> moreover, global warming issues threaten, <coughs> threaten environmental sustainability in the Earth. Currently, no one reaches no one reaches their mitigation and the understanding of detailed physical mechanism. However, the satellite global monitoring of atmospheric and space electricity is expected to overcome these issues. And in, this, uh, in this talk, we present our project for this innovative science. First mission is practical earthquake prediction. Second mission is tsunami early warning system. Third mission, lightning prediction. Fourth mission, uh, study of global warming understanding. Before introducing our four missions, we, pro uh, we propose two plans for the global monitoring. First plan is single satellite operation as a low-cost plan. This plan A provides some synchronous orbit, and uh, the satellite is launched as a piggyback. <coughs> Next plan B is for three satellite constellation launched, launched by a dedicated JAXA Option rocket. In this launch, the three satellites are released with 0 0.2 degree initial inclination difference. This enables us to gradually increase longitudinal difference among the three satellites, right? uh, like this here, uh, one month later, six months later, one year later. Our first mission is earthquake mission. Uh, for its mitigation study of earthquake prediction began in the 1960s to find earthquake precursor. But now, uh, one find variable and frequently repeatable precursor yet. So we have simple question, do earthquake precursor really exist? Uh, Twelve years ago, French group launched one microsatellite called Demeter. Then, they found one of earthquake precursors, which is pre-seismic decrease of VLF wave intensity at night time. According to their reports, uh, the background VLF electromagnetic wave mainly formed by hoistral wave decrease during four hours before the earthquake within 500 km epicentral distance. Therefore, our satellite has an uh, electric field probe. Three probe was deployed like this, an electric field between two points uh, was measured. Uh, attitude control and attitude determination are like this. Uh, in addition, value of electromagnetic wave intensity is confirmed by electric temperature probe measurement. In the plan A, a mission objective is understanding the mechanism of this phenomenon. When the satellite throws the area, the forward behold 50 at 500 km from the center. Ground station requests 4 hour and 40 kHz high sampling data. And the satellite sends the requested data recorded in the 
in the one uh, in the on board stretch into the ground station. And this system allow us the analysis analyze the ion spirit precursor in detail, which can approach the understanding the mechanism. In the early phase of plan B, uh, we investigate uh, lat uh, latitudinal dis distribution on the satellite orbit. On the other hand, in the late phase of plan B, we also investigate distribution of space include longitudinal difference. In addition, we investigate the feasibility of real-time um, identification of VLF degrees because the uh, distance among the satellite is larger than the radius of precursor. Uh, radius of precursor. Uh, for statistical analysis, more than 100 events should be recorded. And here we show the uh, calculation of the number of events about plan A and B. We use global earthquake catalog in 2012 and orbit data of our satellite. Uh, vertical axis is the number of events and horizontal axis is operation period. Plan B of the uh, W events comparing with plan A. At least one year operation with three satellites is uh, enough to the sat uh, statistical investigation. Next, uh, second mission is tsunami mission. Oh, sorry. Uh, left figure shows the tsunami height of uh, tsunami height in Tokyo earthquake in Japan. Right figure shows total electron content. TC. Um, as you can see, TC depressions just over the tsunami source area appeared eight minutes after the tsunami. We discovered this phenomenon uh, and named it tsunami ionospheric hole. Although this result was obtained by ground-based observation, uh, we we will uh, we will show that. The tsunami ionospheric hole is observable from satellite altitude. In the ground observation, the TEC is observed by GPS ground-based receivers. On the other hand, the low, the low Earth orbit area satellite enables to measure the TEC between GPS and LEO satellite by using radio occultation technology. Uh, it means that global tsunami monitoring is possible. For the observation, we employ Code's GPS occultation receiver, which is uh, a low cost, low power consumption, and small size. In the plan A, we obtain more than 20% probability to measure the vertical ionospheric electron density profile, like this figure, which is uh, required to understand the physical mechanism of tsunami ionospheric hole by using uh, aerial occultation satellites such as HOMOSAT-3 HOMOSAT cosmic and um, other microsatellites. For plan B, residual time series of occulting TEC among three satellites enable us to spatially identify TIH, which verifies feasibility for satellite-based tsunami early warning system with real-time monitor. Uh, mission four is lighting mission. To try to verify lighting precursor, we observe gamma radiation. Uh, 
Why is gamma radiation? Because recent work uh, mentioned that martial thunderstorm generates energetic radiation. This is time series one of uh, Uh, this time three is one of uh, our ground based uh, results. After gamma ray increased, uh, lightning struck. Uh, space based observation may frequently detect them. Uh, the plan A is observation of gamma ray detected by. Uh, CSI scintillator and lighting identi identified by the satellite camera, VLF, ALF booms, and cloud based lighting network data. Uh, to uh, identify the gamma ray uh, between, uh, sorry, uh, to identify the gamma ray between the terrestrial origin and gamma ray uh, galaxy. A planetary origin to detect uh, like this are used. Uh, in the early phase of Plan B, uh, we tried very ambitious mission: gamma ray source finding using time of arrival method. Uh, the gamma ray source location identifying further supports a spatial te temporal correlation uh, between gamma ray and the lightning stroke. Uh, for this purpose, the mission requires is like this. Uh, mission 4 is global warming mission. Although the many scientists agree that the warming uh, originates from CO2 gas uh, uh, some temperature change cannot be explained in, in only by CO2 gas. So some scientists argue that cosmic ray and atmospheric electric field uh, are also uh, might contribute to global warming factor. Uh, these are not uh, major hypotheses. Uh, not major hypotheses. Uh, however, uh, we consider that the natural phenomena are complicated. So. The other origins should be investigated to understand the phenomena uh, currently. Uh, sorry, currently. Uh, therefore, in this global warming mission, we focus on the geoscale atmospheric electric field. Uh, we briefly, uh, sorry, we briefly introduced global electrical circuit. Uh, when lightning occurs, VLF and ELF wave emit and propagate inside the Earth's ionosphere waveguide. Due to such a waveguide, their standing wave remain, namely Schumann resonances. The Schumann resonances, uh, a recent uh, work reported that Schumann resonances is uh, highly correlated with uh, temperature. Therefore, the observation of Schumann resonances become global temperature monitoring too. Uh, as shown in our obse observe, uh, we recognize space electric discharge uh, called gigantic jet. When lightning occurs, huge luminous uh, discharge are uh, also occurs above the thunder cloud occasionally. Uh, this event is termed transient luminous event, TLE. Uh, since TLE emits uh, 10 times stronger than ELF waves than Schumann resonances, so it is necessary to investigate how much TLE events influence on the Schumann resonance intensity for global bombing, global study. Uh, next, in plan A, the monitoring uses a camera and VF booms. As this figure, a camera can see left region. A ELF waveform is continuously recorded. Once camera detected luminous discharge um, event, movie and waveform data are recorded too. Uh, in early phase of plan B, uh, 
uh, satellite constellation, we cons uh, construct its 3D structure. Uh, three dimensional uh, discharge uh, structure contribute to further understanding for global warming uh, for global electric circuit. This is all contents for global warming mission. Uh, this is summary of operating sequence for all missions in Plan B. Uh, as you can see, uh, several sub-missions also are uh, carried out, usually using gradual orbit with expanding. Okay, this slide shows <coughs> here uh, list of mass and power of all component. Total mass is uh, this, like this. This slide shows uh, configuration of spacecraft. First, not, uh, this longer boom is installed vertical, uh, as a vertical boom. Uh, this picture, uh, we, we use this picture as boom. This picture. Uh, first, natural frequency of long boom is estimated to be. Sorry. Estimated to be around 3 hertz. Altitude determination is done by these sensors. Altitude control is done by this instrument. For con communication, we consider two main ground stations for each satellite, Norway and Japan. The estimation of average access duration is 3.9 hours per day. Expected communication downlink data amount is uh, estimated 100 megabytes per day at uh, 256 cubic yards, which is enough to mission requirement. Power balance is also satisfied uh, with margin. Then once for zero zero is installed to uh, deorbit the satellite, the orbiting can be achieved within 20, 25 years after the DOM development. The okay, total cost for plan A and B are like this. We can start plan A with several universities. Uh, after success of plan A, we integrate it and conduct plan B as a national project. After plan B, we believe that these science, scientific, uh, innovative missions change the. Oh, sorry. Oh, so, things of work with like inform real time. Allowance running by means of microsatellites consideration real time monitoring. Okay, here is our conclusion. Microsatellite with atmospheric and space electricity monitoring will contribute to the mitigations of various natural disasters. That's all. Thank you for your attention. According to your slides, you want to have three different inclinations at uh, uh, fixed orbit altitude, 670 kilometers or something like that. Uh, can you just go to that slide? Or well, if it takes too long, uh, it's impossible to have three sun synchronous orbits at the same altitude at three different inclinations. Sun synchronous is this, it's just one inclination. It's possible. Otherwise, your orbital planes will just drift relative to each other, and the satellites will not be closely spaced over the mission life. Yeah, you showed it's a pretty complex mission dealing with well, very interesting parts, but. <coughs> The mission is the one thing, and the interpretation of, of what, what
what's going, coming down to earth is another part. And uh, that's the, uh, well, an operational aspect, logistics, and also a cost aspect. I did see in your presentation, plane A and plane B, what, what, what are the costs, the resources, or the, the reasons, and, and, and what, what, what's the summary of that, including, I would say, data processing on Earth and data distribution on Earth. Can you have some words about that? Total cost for plan A uh, and B, like this slide, uh, we can start plan A with several university. Uh, after success of plan A, we integrate it and conduct plan B as a, as a national project. Mm -hmm. And what is a mission lifetime? Sorry? Mission lifetime. Uh, to Two years. Plan A is two years. Uh, in Plan B, one year. Uh, and that includes also some indications of the climate change. Within two years, you have some incremental changes which can extrapolate it for climate change. Yeah. That's the idea. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, you don't need an uh, orbit control system. You have orbit control system? We need. Yeah, I, I may miss, but uh, because you should keep the relative orbit of the three satellites for the plan B, in that case, maybe the orbit control system will be required. This is the attitude control system. Yes. Orbit control. You you don't you don't study about that. Okay. Okay. I understand. And so the next question is that you change the inclination by 0.2 degree, but another way is to change the large omega by uh, 0.2 degree, and then you can make a similar type of the separation of the three satellites. So you uh, compare these two methods? Um, did not. Okay, so please, please do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all. Just one quick comment. This is, I was, I was uh, when I was reading the paper, you, you have a, you, I don't think you have a mass budget on the slides, but you have a 40 kilogram spacecraft more or less, and your structure was like almost 50%. So you may want to consider that that ratio seems high to me. Most satellites are lower than 50%. Um, so you, you should be looking at that. The, the other question, it wasn't clear to me how. Um, if, if the precursors are um, theoretical precursors that we think are there, or are they proven to be precursors you can read? Because if, if, if they're proven, then, then I'm, I'm with you. If, if it's a theory that needs to be confirmed, maybe you can start with a, with a cheaper test program to verify the precursors before you go into a national, a national program. But, but I, w I would like you to, to, to answer that, that the idea of are the precursors something that it's, it's well understood and well proven and, and we can do it. That, that was not clear. Okay. Thank you. Um, sorry, no. Um, you can speak to me afterwards. Um, uh, I think that's, that's all. Thank you very much.